Hi, it's Jennifer Escalera, Energy Therapist of Kosha Wellness Center. I'm here today with Laura Hosford of Light Leaders Academy. Laura is an inspiring visionary light leader for world peace, teacher, mystic, multi-sensory intuitive healer, channel for the divine feminine Christ, author, speaker, and light language channel. Thank you, Laura, for joining us today. Thank you, Jennifer, for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here with you and your audience and to be able to hopefully contribute some positive feedback and some helpful tips. Yes, yes. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions to help demystify meditation. I really want people to know how accessible uh, meditation can be, as well as learning about from you, from different people's perspectives about how they apply meditation. So you ready to get started? I'm ready. All right. So how long have you been meditating? Oh, great question. I started to meditate back in 2005. Um, and I never will forget if I could just take a moment to share my story. Um, I actually was um, a member of the ARE Society, which is all about Edgar Casey, And I remember I had ordered some cassette tapes that were um, you could use as tools to help you to learn how to meditate. And so I think I, I started that way and I started listening to those cassette tapes that would give you tips and things like that. And I remember that it did help. It did help somewhat to get me started, but my mind was still, you know, I still had that monkey chatter going on a lot in my mind. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I really wanted to move beyond that. I really wanted to come into that place of inner calm and stillness that I, you know, had read about was achievable through meditation practices. And so um, I then decided to go try some yoga and Tai Chi. And so um, when I went there, they actually taught me this really cool method of being able to take my mind, my mental mind, and actually focus it in um, on doing a, an exercise with the hands. And so, um, because I had tried really the breathing technique, um, and that really wasn't quite enough for me, for my mind. I've always had a kind of strong left brain, mm -hmm. um, mental uh, mind. So what they did was they actually, and I'll just kind of demonstrate, they actually had me take my hands and imagine that I had a ball of energy in between my hands. And they said, just focus, you know, with your mind either on you know that ball of energy or you could actually focus on the palms of your hands and then just kind of slowly move your hands out like this oh that's cool and then move your hands in it was really really transformative for my meditation practice because then it gave my busy mind something to do right yeah that's yeah it. and that's it was cool. it was cool yeah and also um because it was also um helping me to remember my own um, healing abilities and intuitive abilities and, and as an empath. Mm -hmm. So then I began to feel the energy in my hands more and more. And so it really became really fun, actually. <laughs> so yeah. I love to uh, share this because it's easy and it's simple and anybody can do it. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, there's many different ways that each of us can learn how to meditate. I think it's just for me, that was the one that helped me to really move beyond that kind of place of, oh my gosh, am I ever going to get this? <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, I know. You know, and um, so, yeah, it was wonderful. Um, so I'd love to share that. Thank you. Thank you. And do you meditate daily? I do. I do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, meditation, it just, to me, becomes a way of life. Um, or at least that's been my experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it started out with, again, the method I just showed. And then also I would listen to music because music, I'm a lover of music. And I would listen to either classical music or you might what you call kind of new age type music. And then that also gave my mind something to kind of focus on. And then I was able to kind of relax into the breathing um, and really slow down my breathing, which is, you know, part of the meditation practice. Mm -hmm. um, and then from that point, it really moved me into grounding more into my body. And as I was able to ground my energy more into my body, instead of living so much in the mental realm, 
then I began to even, it just all started to come together and I began to relax and I began to really get, you know, less anxious and more calm. So, mm -hmm. um, can I ask you a quick question? So sure. for those who might not know the term of grounding, how do you describe grounding for you? What would that mean uh, for you and maybe others who are watching this or listening to this can understand that and be able to start practicing their own grounding? Sure. Great question. Um, well, grounding, we tend to in our society because we uh, are so much sometimes in our brain, right? Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of energy that we carry around, you know, a crown and around the top of our head. And so um, the more that we can bring that energy down into the body, we can actually bring our energy down through our heart and actually carry our energy all the way down into the core of our body, our hips, and all the way down our legs and bring it down into our feet. And so as we do that, and then we want to send the energy down into Mother Earth and connect in with the core of Mother Earth. Mm. So grounding uh, really to me goes hand in hand with meditation because once we can really ground more of our energy, when I say our energy, I'm really talking about you know, our soul, our soul essence, if you will, our soul self, mm -hmm. we're grounding more of that into the physical body, we can become more um, calm, we can become more peaceful, we can feel more comfortable. Um, we can also begin to really determine, well, this is my energy, and this is who I am versus that someone else's energy. And that's not me. Mm -hmm. um, so grounding is, is, is one of the keys to me of really being able to have successful meditation. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the practice that I just shared with you, mm -hmm. it was helping me to actually bring that energy down from my head where it was, you know, spinning around and all the, you know, the chatter, we call it. Mm -hmm. And I was moving beyond the chatter and I was able to bring more of my energy down into my heart at first. And as I connected with my heart, then I was able to go get quieter and quieter mm -hmm. and move beyond that monkey chatter. Wow. So it is, it is a process. I would say the meditation, you know, you just start right with maybe a minute or two minutes or five minutes, and then you continue to build on it. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually was able to get up to meditating almost two hours a day at one point in wow. my life. Awesome. Um, I don't, I don't do that now, yeah. but I don't have time. Yeah. But you know, at that time I wasn't working and I was really focused on healing myself um, during a, a two year period. And so, um, you know, then I was able to then once you get into the practice and you once you get into connecting with that heart space, it becomes easier right it's almost kind of like what i call muscle memory or mental memory it's sort of like any like a sport like let's say that you go and do yoga and you do the yoga poses well you know after a while practicing your cells start to just memorize that yoga pose and you just kind of naturally slide into it mm -hmm. so with meditation as i continue to practice then it just got easier and easier my body would just go into that meditative state Mm -hmm. and um, really started to ground more as well. And so then what happened, I noticed, is that everywhere, you know, during the day, it didn't matter if I was actually in, a, you know, meditation on purpose, you know, practicing meditation at home. And then when I would uh, leave to go to work and I would go to work, then I would immediately connect with that meditative space. Mm -hmm. And I could carry that meditative space you know, inside of me throughout my day, even though there was a lot of, um, you know, things going on out here, right? A lot of chaotic energies or a lot of energies, you know, going this or that, even mental energy. I was always able to maintain sort of a, a centered inner balance, if you will, uh, inside of me. And so um, that always kept me grounded in my body. Mm -hmm. And it also kept me in a place of where I could, um, just really, you know, stay connected more deeply to who I was and not get pulled off center, you know, so it really helped a lot with the inner balancing. That's wonderful. And how did you get started with meditate or why did you get started with meditating? 
Well, at the time um, when I first started to get in touch with myself and on my uh, inner journey uh, mm -hmm. to, to healing myself, um, and I had read, you know, meditation just seemed really like a natural thing for me. I mean, I was always one who, growing up here in the South, you know, church is pretty prevalent for most people. And so I went to church as a child. And of course, I learned how to pray. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it was very easy to move from prayer. And just, you know, with prayer, a lot of us were taught that we just speak to God or mm -hmm. to source. Right. Um, and so then it kind of to me was like, well, you know, I want to move beyond that. I want to move to where I'm just not speaking to God, but I want to hear God back. You know, I want to hear and I want to receive that communication back to me. And so I think it just evolved into meditation that way. It was just yeah. a very natural process, if you will. Um, and, you know, I was just literally, you know, meditation saved me in so many ways. I mean, mm -hmm. it was so transforming in my life because um, by the time I was like 42 or 45, I had my mental chatter inside was so, it, it, it was almost, I felt like I was afflicted, Jennifer. It was just mm -hmm. all of these um, tapes running in my head, you know, literally were getting louder and louder. And it was getting to where I thought, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going insane, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I just got to where I have to do something. I can't stand the pressure of, you know, these thoughts in my head anymore. And so, mm -hmm. um, that's what I think really just led me into really starting to meditate. Wonderful. And is there a particular style of meditation that you enjoy or that you prefer? Um, you know, I think for me, um, the one about breathing, I know a lot of people like to do the breathing. Um, I tried that one, but it wasn't really the one that I was able to really connect with for me. Mm -hmm. Um, the one where I just, you know, showed the exercise with feeling the energy was the one that really led me into being able to calm and quiet my mind. And then also listening to music um, was, mm. you know, important because the music kind of gave my mind something to focus on. And then, you know, I could just relax. So I think for each person, it depends on, um, just your preferences. I also did Tai Chi and Qigong and yoga. Mm -hmm. and, and so those are also can be considered uh, mm -hmm. slow moving meditations. Yep. And so I know for some people, you know, they're just not able to sit still and get quiet. And so for them, they might want to try some alternative methods. Mm -hmm. um, I know that for me also going into nature and sitting outside, particularly to a source of water, Mm -hmm. um, like the ocean, uh, and just hearing the rhythm of the ocean can be very meditative. Mm -hmm. Um, so those were some of the ways that I connected. I know there's more ways. Sometimes people will do chanting, mm -hmm. um, is another way that you can learn to meditate. So for me, I just really suggest you just try different things to see what, you know, what resonates with you. There's really, to me, no right or wrong way. It's just about finding, you know, what you feel most comfortable with. <laughs> yeah, that's so beautifully said. Yeah, I think that's yeah. my philosophy as well, is that you really just have to try them all and see what yeah. work, what fits within your personality. And then you'll see that it evolves. Your meditation practice will change over time, just as you change, you know, so I'm a big believer in that as well. And, um, is your favorite style of meditation the reason why you stay regular? You know, I think that for me, um, I, I moved really beyond that. Um, I think at first it was important that particularly like the Tai Chi and the Qigong, it gave me a discipline. Uh, it helped with that to give myself permission to, um, because those activities are group activities. And so, you know, it also made it fun, right? You go to a, a yoga studio or Tai Chi with other people. And then, you know, it was, it was something I look forward to. It was something that was fun. It was something that was positive. Um, there was a lot of good energy and I really needed all that to, um, kind of give me a different flavor of my meditation, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, 
because sometimes, you know, just uh, when I was in my meditation practice at home um, and it was, it's beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful and I could connect with myself, but it kind of just gave me a different kind of flavor. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think I was just experimenting with different ways to meditate and just allowing myself to play with them. And then at some point, you know, during my practice, it, to me, it really is not even, I don't consider it a discipline anymore. It's not like that for me. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's not even uh, devotional energy. I think I moved beyond that into mm-hmm. a sense that it's just really um, part of my everyday existence now. Absolutely. It's like I just merged with it and I feel like that it's a way of being. It's a state of being for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's how evolved you can go with a meditation practice. And then really from there, you can go into evolving into becoming more neutral I call it more neutral in your energetic field Mm. Um, and so you know meditation gives us a wonderful way to observe what's going on in our life and getting more clarity and awareness and so as we get quiet and then we can you know hear our inner voice or perhaps we see you know images or however it happens for us or feelings then this brings us into another level of meditation where we can really begin to transcend or transmute those energies. And then as we do that, then that's where we can really connect in with that inner peace, I call it, and that inner calm and stillness, despite all the chaos and despite all, you know, whatever's going on in our life, we can always come back to that center. And that sort of anchors, anchors me. Um, You know, that is my, my, foundation i mean meditation i guess in a way when you ask has become the the spiritual foundation for me um Mm. in my way of life um so i practice prayers or intentions as well during my meditation time i sort Mm -hmm. of do a blending Mm -hmm. but that's the beauty of it you get to decide you get to choose you get to create whatever you want that's best for you Mm -hmm. um yeah Mm -hmm. so i think that you know, I moved way beyond the original, uh, I call it standard definition of prayer. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you know, cool. yes. that I learned as a child and, um, you know, and now I just enjoy it. I just, I wouldn't go a day without it because it just brings me such beauty and um, comfort mm-hmm. and uh, reassurance that um, no matter what's going on, I can go into that very grounded place of stillness and peace and compassion. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. So um, my last question is, what is your number one tip that you can give us that you could share with us to help encourage people to be regular with their meditation practice or to just not give up on meditation? What's one tip that you can share with us? Um, Wow. You know, I think it's, um, it's a great question. There's so many things, but I think what I'll say is that, that you, uh, you deserve this time for yourself. I mean, I find where we're reluctant sometimes to take even 15 minutes a day for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I would invite your listeners to just for 15 minutes a day, put yourself first as a priority and give yourself permission to do that. Mm -hmm. And if that means just, even if it means sitting in your car for Mm -hmm. 15 minutes um, or taking a walk for 15 minutes or whatever it is um, for you, you know, it doesn't have to be the same thing every day. You can mix it up. It could say, well, today I've got a really hectic day, but I've got 15 minutes. I can sit in my car and I can just breathe, you know, do some deep breathing and I can just be still and quiet and give myself a break. You know, to me, that's just, um, that's the best gift you can give yourself because meditation is a form of nurturing Mm -hmm. yourself. Um, and just allowing yourself to be without any expectations and just allowing yourself to release those from your shoulders, from your body in that tension and that stress and that anxiety that we tend to easily get entangled with as we go through our day. Right. So 
I would, I would invite your listeners not to look at it as a discipline either. I would challenge to mm -hmm. move into it more as a state of loving compassion and nurturance for yourself. You're beautiful. Yeah. That's so awesome. This is so amazing. Thank you for all of your wisdom and multiple tips. You know, <laughs> thank you. you. Exercise. You started to show us, or I was going through the the process of what your grounding exercise is. I was feeling it. I was going through my crown to my heart to my feet to Mother Earth, and you know. So I hope that other people were getting that same message. I think for those who are listening to it versus watching it, we'll be able to get that. Um, but I was feeling you. I was like, wow. And then right now, when you said that tension in your shoulders, my shoulders literally just went, ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So yes. Even just in your voice, like you just took us through this meditation experience by your wisdom, by what you were uh, teaching us today. So yeah. thank you, Laura. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope everyone else um, shares the same experience that I did and more. And um, to learn more about Laura, I will provide all of her information, uh, her bio and her website. But if you want to just uh, give us your website really quick, so in case people want to instantly find out who you are and learn more about you, can you give us your website, please? Sure. You can just go to laurahosford.com. So that's L-A-U-R-A-H-O-S-F-O-R-D.com. All right. Wonderful. Everyone have a great day and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Namaste.